Lindsay. These books can provide you with inspiration and instruction, but you can actually design your own Gansey based on what you read in the books. What I would like to do is just point out some of the characteristics of a typical Gansey. You will learn that they start with the Channel Island cast on, a very durable cast on that gives you a beautiful beaded edge at the bottom of all your knit stitches. And then what looks like plain knitting is indeed plain knitting, but because it's in the round and because it's like a little tongue in cheek, we actually have a seam stitch. In this case, I have a set of seam stitches where I just take the purl and I follow it right up the whole sweater, coming here and ending up at the sleeve. And this, even though you can't really see it, it does provide a little demarcation for the seam. So this is one of the characteristics of a Gansey. Cast on with a Channel Island cast on, a seam stitch at the side, and plain knitting until you get to around where you want to start the armhole. And then there's usually a little dividing section before you have what we call brocade, which is a knit purl design. Ganseys also have gussets under the arm. And the reason for the gusset is, you know, if you're a fisherman bringing in the nets, you need a lot of room in your sleeve so that you don't have to worry about the sleeve being too tight. So if you look here, you see my purl stitch from the seam stitch just continues right in a purl on each side of the gusset and then it comes right down, following it right down to the end of the sleeve. It's kind of a nice way to knit and a nice way to keep it in mind. Okay, and so as you knit your Gansey, in my case, when I start knitting a Gansey, I know how many stitches I need, I do my gauge and so on, but I don't usually know what I want for the top. And as I'm knitting the bottom, it's a lot of plain knitting, in this case, nine, uh, nine stitches per inch on a size zero needle. I had plenty of time to think about how I would do the top. And when I was reading my books and doing my research, I came across this Gansey worn by a preacher, Stephen Hawkins. And it's in this book with a graph. But as it happened, while I was working on this Gansey, another book came out with the same picture, a little bit bigger, that made it a lot easier for me. And there he is. And here's our Gansey pattern, all spelled out, our brocade pattern. And this is what I decided to use. So here it is in my latest Gansey. And um, it's very nice to knit because, you know, you're knitting these lines straight, but the um, interplay of the knit and pearls does make those lines waver. Uh, uh, when I do the neckline of the Gansey, I'm not using shoulder strap. I'm using a three needle bind off for both shoulders. When you get to this point on your Gansey, if you choose it, make sure you go in the same direction for both. Don't do one one way and the other the other way because the three needle bind off is definitely a two sided operation. And I would like you just to see the neck. I use Elizabeth Zimmerman's trick. This looks like a close neck, but it's actually very roomy with no constraints at all because when I finished the neck, I sewed down live stitches. So it's very loose and very easy fitting. I didn't bind off and sew down stitches and then have a tight edge. I sewed down live stitches, so there's plenty of room in that neck. Uh, as you're knitting your sleeve, I happen to do both sleeves at the same time on uh, two circular needles. And it's really nice because you get to do your decreases together. And then in this case, when I went to do the final ribbing, I did it on a very small needle because I didn't want to do extra decreases at the bottom edge. And I used what you call a tubular bind off, which gives a really nice bind off. And the information about how to do these techniques is easily available these days. Okay, so uh, this was my third Gansey, and I'll just briefly show you the second Gansey I knit. This one, this is done with Wendy yarn at seven stitches per inch. This was a yarn called Frangipani, also a Gansey wool, but a little uh, thinner wool, tighter gauge. The inspiration for this Gansey came from a book, this book, uh, Fisherman Knitting, a little um, pamphlet. And um, this Gansey was worn by John Tar Bishop, and I just took his wife's design and I modified it a little for this Gansey. And my first Gansey was done in the traditional navy blue color. And I'm sure a lot of you will recognize this design because it's pretty famous. This is known as a, as a musician's Gansey. This little boy here is wearing it, and it's been graphed out. Uh, in Beth's book, she graphs out the musician's Gansey. 
again, it's not that hard to find uh, where you can find it. But this was my first Gansey and done with all the characteristics, the Channel Island cast on, the uh, gusset, and so on. So, when you're ready to start your Gansey, start reading your books, start studying your pictures, and see where your inspiration carries you. This Gansey is about 12 years old. It's been worn by my husband every winter for 12 years, and as you can see, since he's not a fisherman, it's not wearing out at all. <laughs>